Grace aka Face Cousin here. Welcome divas once again to my channel. I am so glad you're back. I do not take it for granted at all. I really appreciate you divas. Thank you so so much for your continued support and for visiting my channel once again today. So yeah, welcome. So today divas we're doing something that's been very highly requested um, and I've been putting it off for a while. Not that I've been putting it off, I just haven't had time to do it. So I decided I would do it today because the request for this particular tutorial um, has been coming fast and thick. So I've decided to just go ahead and do it. And this tutorial really is about makeup brushes and their uses. So what does each makeup brush do? What are the uses of each of the makeup brushes? How many makeup brushes do we have? How many should we have in our kit? Well, how many brushes you should have in your kit is dependent on what you need brushes for. Are you a makeup artist? Or are you just the lady who loves makeup and you just want to, you know, have the right tools for yourself, the right tools to create beautiful, flawless makeup on yourself. Now, if you're a makeup artist, then you would need as many brushes as possible. And I'm hoping that by the end of today's, um, you know, training, you will be able to, you know, ascertain what you need and what you don't need, okay? You know, if you're an up and coming makeup artist, I don't expect you to go out and buy every single make, uh, makeup brush out there in one go, but you're going to build up your collection over the years because apart from your skills, good tools, they help you go very, very far. And that's half of your work done. If you've got great tools, good products and skills, the sky is your limit. In fact, even the sky is not your limit. You can go beyond. Okay, divas? Now, if you're a lady who is just fabulous and you just love your makeup and you just want to know what tools you need, you know, I'm hoping that at the end of today's tutorial, you would also be able to decide which of the brushes you really need for your kit because we have different brushes that do different things. For example, we're gonna focus on each brush group, like the, um, the face brushes, i.e. foundation, highlight, contouring, and then we're gonna move on to the eyeshadow brushes, which are the shader brushes, you know, the crease brushes, and so on and so forth. We're gonna cover every single brush group that we have, okay? So hopefully, by the end of this tutorial, you will be able to decide which brushes would work for you. Okay, divas? Right, I'm talking too much. Without further ado, let's get into these brushes. Right, so the first brushes I wanna talk about today is the face brushes, okay? And we have several. So I'm going to start with the powder brushes. Okay, divas? And I do apologize for some of them are slightly dirty, but you know, I've had to do my makeup, so. <laughs> and I'm really using my makeup brushes for this tutorial as opposed to what I use on my clients. So, you know, it's just easier to grab mine, okay? So anyway, I've just grabbed three powder brushes and these are the three that I've just grabbed. And they come in different shapes and sizes, as you can see, but these are all big, fluffy makeup brushes. And as you can see, this is the widest of them all. It is quite big um, and this is kind of, this is it's it's wide as well so you know it could just go all over the face if you're looking to blend the face or apply the powder very quickly all over the face this would do it the quickest time um, but this you know is all does exactly the same thing okay um, as that one it does exactly the same thing it's just slightly smaller and then you have this one which is also a powder brush. It does exactly the same thing, just smaller. Smaller means more control though, I would say. Smaller means more control. So depending on what you're trying to achieve with the powder, then you would decide which brush would work best for you. So if you're looking to, you know, go all over the face in seconds, maybe a wider brush like this might be preferred by you. Or, you know, this, you know, um, but like I said, this does the same thing, but the smaller the brush, the the smaller, um, sorry, the more control you would have, okay? So these are the three um, 
powder brushes that I use. Now, apart from these three, because I use these to apply powder all over my face, and I have these kind of brushes for my clients as well, and I do the same. I tend to use these kind of brushes more on my client because it gives me a bit more control, okay? But I also use, where is it? This brush. Now, this is not really a powder brush per se. You know, this is a flat bronzer. So you can use this for bronzing, you know. Um, for those of you ladies who like to, you know, put a bronze on your face, that's what this is actually for. This is a um, flat bronzer brush. However, the way I use this is like almost a buffing brush. So once I put my powder on, sometimes I just, if I don't like the way the powder is sitting on my face because I personally, I like to use um, Studio Fix powder. So sometimes it kind of looks like it's not sitting right. That's when I grab this brush and I just buff, buff it in. And what this does, it gives it that almost airbrushed look, airbrush finish and everything just blends in flawlessly. So that's what I use this brush for. So aside of my powder brushes, sometimes I reach for this brush if I need it to give me an even more flawless finish, okay? So that's that about the powder brushes. So next, we're going to talk about the, and I'm turning because I'm grabbing the brushes as I'm speaking to you, Diva. So now we're going to grab the foundation brushes. So these are the brushes that we would use to apply um, the emollients onto our face. So things like anything creamy. So like your foundations, you know, liquid, creamy, sheer, you know what. These are the brushes that we're going to use. So I'm just going to grab all those foundation brushes and I'll show you the different ones that we have. So these brushes are all my, um, these are all my Sigma brushes, which are also, um, that I use for my foundations. Now I prefer to use, sorry, I'm not holding them up. These are the brushes and I'll go through each and every one of them. These are the brushes that I like to use to apply my liquid foundation. Um, now, for the cream foundations, I prefer a sponge. Um, for my clients, I use um, the square sponges because I like to just dispose of them because it's just healthier that way. But for myself, I use um, a beauty blender because I could just wash it and put it back. But like I said, for my clients, because I want to dispose of it, I don't like to transfer sponges from one client to another. So I prefer to use the square brush um, sponges for that. That's if I'm using the cream foundations on my clients. However, if I'm using a liquid foundation, then I prefer to use these Kabuki brushes. And these are all Sigma brushes, by the way. You can get these all off Sigma. Um, now, this one is the flat one, which I tend to use the most because I myself, I like to apply liquid um, foundation. So, you know, this is fantastic for that. And, you know, the hairs are coming out. I think I must have soaked it in water for too long for some reason. So this is the angled um, Kabuki brush, which is exactly the same as the flat one. However, because it's angled, it means that you could reach into the corners, for example, underneath the eye. You know, it's easy with this brush, you know, as opposed to this one. Okay, because this one is angled, so you know you can just place it and it will just sit and get under the eye easily. Um, and this, this is another one that I use quite often, and I apologize because I did use it today. Um, but it's as opposed to the flat kabuki, it's um, slightly tapered, so it's kind of a dome shape. And I use this just as the same way as the flat. Um, Kabuki brush. I use this one and it's just a so I, whichever one. I mean, I tend to reach for this one the most, but if it's dirty and I haven't had time to wash it, I would grab this one. It does the exact same thing. It's just that this one is got a slightly dome shape, whereas this one is flat. And I prefer this flat one because it just it's, it flattens itself against my face and I just find it easier to use. Um, yeah. So, and this is another kind of dome one for the angle. So each of them come flat or in a dome shape. So that it's angled, 
or tapered angled, I don't know what you call it, but you know what I mean. Just like this one, but this is flat and this is dumb and it does the exact same thing. The angled ones are easier to reach into those um, tight spots. Um, also, I've got this one. Um, sometimes I use this, again, you can use this, it's, you know, this is a, a tapered one and um, exactly the same thing. It's a kabuki brush, but it's tapered and, you know, it's fabulous for foundation. However, because it's tapered, it's easier to get, for example, under the eye and all that. But because it's a bit big, I tend to use it um, to set my under eye. But I have since got a better brush um, for that. But yeah, I use this as well, as well um, for, you know, setting my powder. But it it's ideal for emollient. So if you want to, for example, your highlighter, if you want to you know, blend out your highlighter, you can use this brush, okay, divas? Because um, that dome shape is gonna help you reach those um, difficult to reach areas. So those are the Kabuki brushes, which are absolutely fabulous for applying your liquid foundations, okay? And these are the different heads, all right, divas? Okay, right. Now, for each of those brushes, there is a smaller version. Sigma is the one. Okay, so for each of those brushes, I have got a smaller version. And what I tend to do with these is highlight and contour, okay? So this is that dome one that I was talking about earlier. Uh, it's easy for you to reach those, you know, difficult um, areas. However, don't you think this is even better? Because it's smaller, it's easier to control. You know, you have more control. So you can choose if you wanna, you know, this is gonna be easier. I guess this will be better to, if you wanna place, you know, highlighter, you know, you know how we do it, that square shape. This will be easier to, you know, cover a larger area. However, this is what I would recommend if you really wanna get into that, you know, the tight corners under your eyes, this will be perfect for that, okay? Again, this is the this is a smaller version of that flat kabuki that I showed you earlier. This is a smaller version of that, okay, divas? So again, this one I use for my contour. You know, if I want it really defined, this is the brush that I reach for divas, okay? Um, again, this is the flat angled one. This is another one that I use, but this one, because of the way it sits against my nose, I prefer to use this to highlight my nose. I mean, it's there, so I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna give them each a responsibility, aren't I? So that's what this one's for. And then I have this one, which is the um, kind of dome looking angled one. And I use this also for contouring. In fact, I prefer this one because it just, you know, gets into the crease right there. It's easier for me to get into that crease, not crease, but you know, to get into under my um, cheekbone with this brush. I just like the way it sits against the skin, but you know, this does the exact same thing. I just prefer that one. So really and truly, it's a personal, it's a choice of, it's a case of personal preference, divas. You just go for which one you think works best for you. You know, just try different ones and just, you know, you would just see that you kind of lean to more towards a particular brush for a particular thing. And the fact that a brush is designed for X, for example, doesn't mean that you can't use it for Z as well. So you know, you just figure out what works for you. But this is just a guide, divas. This is not the be all end all, the rule of brushes. Mm -mm. This is just a guide, okay, divas? So yeah, so that's that. And then I also have um, these Real Technique brushes as well, um, which are also Kabuki brushes. Um, I have to say I don't reach for these as much as the Sigma ones to be quite honest. I guess it's because I already have the Sigma ones and I like them. But I tend to use this more as a powder brush sometimes, but hardly ever because I have better powder brushes. But that's not to say that it's not a really good brush, it really is. But because I have the Sigma ones which is a bit more dense, I just prefer it. But this is lightweight, 
easy to control does exactly the same thing and this is a smaller version now this one I find myself using to set <laughs> I, apply, I use it to um, apply my contour powder this one that's what I find myself using it for however you could also use it to apply foundation but for this shape I would use it for you know because it well actually I tell you like it's called a contour brush <laughs> No wonder I reach for it to set my contour, you know, to put my contour powder in. So yeah, that's exactly what it's for. And that's what I've been using it for divas. So yeah, these two are the Real Techniques ones. And um, like I said, they're just as good as the um, Sigma ones. But because the Sigma ones are a bit more dense, I just tend to reach for them more than I do these, okay? And last but not the least, we've got the foundation brush okay I I don't reach for this at all <laughs> for foundation but it works you apply you use it to apply a foundation and you just pull it down okay um, that's what it's for but I personally I don't really reach for it that much however this one is a like it's got two ends to it so I find myself reaching more for this end because I can also use it you know sometimes when the um, Sigma brushes are you know need a bit of a clean if I've been working or you know I haven't had time to clean my brushes and yet I have to apply foundation um, sometimes I reach for this one and again this is really good um, to apply concealer under the eye you know so yeah that's what I use this for.